Election season in Canada has officially begun. Here's everything you need to know. This is Canada's 42nd national election. It will elect 338 members of parliament representing all regions of Canada, as well as a single prime minister. Canada's current prime minister, Stephen Harper, head of the Conservative Party, is seeking a fourth consecutive term, something only ever done by one other prime minister in Canadian history, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, better known as the dude on the $5 bill. Even if he wins, however, Stephen Harper would not become the longest serving Prime Minister in Canadian history because his first two terms were very short. Another interesting thing about this election is that Canadians will be electing their biggest parliament ever. Because Canada's population continues to grow, Canadians will be electing 30 more seats this time around. It doesn't necessarily seem that one party will benefit more from this than the others, however. So contrary to what you might have heard, this is not an early election. The thing is scheduled for October 19th, which was set in law back in 2007. This ended the previous system of allowing the Prime Minister to call an election whenever he wanted. However, Canadian law distinguishes between campaign time and non-campaign time, with campaign time having lots of specific rules about how much money politicians are allowed to spend on their self-promotional propaganda. The Prime Minister still has the power to decide when campaign time begins, and on Sunday, Prime Minister Harper declared that campaign time begins right now. This means the campaign will last 11 weeks, which makes it the longest Canadian election campaign since 1926. But does that matter? The main argument in favor of a long campaign time is that the politicians have already been acting like they've been campaigning for several months now, so we may as well make them follow the rules. So there are two progressive type candidates who want to take the Prime Minister's job from Stephen Harper, Justin Trudeau of the Liberal Party, and Thomas Mulcair of the NDP. There are other candidates and parties too, but like the vast majority of Canadians, I'm choosing to ignore them. Mulcair is 60 years old and a former cabinet minister in the government of Quebec. Trudeau is 43 and has been a member of the Canadian Parliament since 2008. He is the son of Canada's most famous Prime Minister, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. This is the first national election for both of them, which is bad because it means they're inexperienced, but it's also good because it means they're fresh. The main issue in this election, as is the main issue in every election ever, is the economy. Canada's economic performance has been dipping slightly over the last few months, and Canadians will be looking for financial support from their government without having to pay for any of it. Again, like every election ever. While it's obviously still too early to talk about what sort of specific promises the different parties and candidates will be making, one of the big issues that distinguishes them from one another Another is the question of taxes. Trudeau wants to raise taxes on the rich, Mulcair wants to raise taxes on big corporations, and Harper doesn't want to raise taxes on anybody. This means that Harper will probably make fewer promises overall, but there will be a lot of pressure on the other parties to make sure that their math adds up. The other big issue is leadership, as all three of the men running for Prime Minister have quite different personalities and reputations. Harper is competent and familiar, but he also has a reputation for being cold and increasingly authoritarian, and there have been a few high-profile ethics scandals within his inner circle. Trudeau is creative and compassionate, but also the most untested and naive, with a history of embarrassing gaffes. Mulcair is experienced and mature, but remains somewhat mysterious, and some people may worry he's too radical. There has never been a prime minister from his party before. There are lots of other issues too, of course, like national security and political reform and foreign policy, and while these issues are lots of fun to talk about, there doesn't seem to be a lot of evidence suggesting that they're deal breakers for most Canadian voters one way or another. Right now, the polls say that it's likely to be a neck and neck race between Harper's Conservatives and Mulcair's NDP, with Justin Trudeau's Liberals likely to remain in third place. However, there is a very real chance that the vote could be split in a weird way that could cause a lot of political turmoil in Canada after the election ends. This has to do with some of the ambiguities surrounding Canada's parliamentary system, namely the idea that the guy who gets to be prime minister should control the most seats in parliament. If Mulcair or Trudeau wins the most seats in parliament, even if that's not an outright majority, one of them will get to be prime minister, no big deal. However, if Harper wins the most seats, but not an outright majority, Mulcair has said he would challenge Harper for the prime ministership by forming an alliance with Trudeau's liberals. This would be a dramatic power play without much precedent in Canadian history, and it's unclear if it would work. The dispute would have to be arbitrated by the Governor General of Canada, the Queen's representative, and his office has not ruled against an incumbent Prime Minister in over 80 years. It's worth mentioning that Justin Trudeau has said that he would not support Mulcair if he tried to do this, but then again, it's not like a politician has never gone back on his word before. People on the left do really hate Harper. So that's where we stand on day one of the election. If anything else happens, I'll be sure to let you know.